it, you might not get a solution because you left your faith at home. Amen. Do you have your faith with you today? By God, you are about to receive something fresh today in the name of Jesus. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. I welcome you all. I welcome those watching, those listening, those even on their way coming. I welcome them by faith because I know they will join this service. Those of you here, God bless you from the crown of your heads to the soles of your feet. We are about to rise and give God thanks and praise and, and pray with thanksgiving adoration that we are here on the first day. It's a great moment. Hallelujah. Be on your feet. Let's pray to God this morning. Tell him something. Appreciate him for the gift of life, for being here, for waking us up this morning. Many went to bed with us last night. They are receiving treatment. Many are somewhere I don't want to mention. But by his grace and his mercy, he has ushered us into his presence on this first day of Prophetic Solution Center. Give him praise. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your life. Thank him for the church. Thank him for the prophet and the family. Thank him even for the economy. Thank God for everything this morning because we are still alive. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you this morning. We exhort you this morning. We honor you this morning. Lord, we adore you this morning. Because you woke us up this morning and you brought us here in the name of Jesus. That will be part of this first day of Solution Center. And we know that what you have in store for us and what you stored for us now that we are back, you are about to receive it in a double portion unto us in the name of Jesus. This morning we pray for this service. Oh God, that you anoint your prophet. You anoint everyone that will partake in this service on the stage. And as a congregant, you anoint this auditorium. Your presence will overflow on all of us. And anyone that brings in any situation will leave it here and go home fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. We pray that every word that will proceed out of the mouth of the prophet will be a word sanctified by God just for us, just for you. Whatever you brought, God has revealed already, and the answer, I believe, is here as well. Pray for the man of God this morning. Say something to God. Praise God for his life, that God has anointed him for this hour, this mission, this day, for Solution Center, that what he's about to do through the Holy Spirit will be divine will be appreciated, will be something that will give us relief of all our burdens in the name of Jesus. Praise God this morning. Praise God this morning. Oh, sing his glory. Let him know that we appreciate for bringing us into this service today. In the name of Jesus, pray for the praise and worship team. Pray for the instrumentalists. Pray for everything. Pray for even the technical crew that today there will be no interference from the pits of hell. In fact, we refuse and we declare the glory of God over this service. That before we go home, your solution will be right in your hand with a testimony attached to it. If you believe and you agree with me, give a shout to the Lord this morning. A shout of praise. Welcome in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I always say this. If God has moved us from 2019 COVID... To August 19th. <laughs> it's not easy. But it was possible for God. He will move us also from shame to fame. Insult to result. Sorry to his glory. Disgrace to grace. Labor to favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. From mockery to praise. Debt to prosperity. Sickness to healing. Barrenness into parenthood. Tears into laughter, singleness to double, and will bless us with his divine addition and multiplication. Come on, bless the Lord with a shout of praise this morning. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Today being the first day, I know God will not disappoint us. He never disappoints. A word is coming for you, tailored for you individually. Individually. So be ready to receive it. The moment it proceeds out of the mouth of the prophet, catch it live. Don't let it go. If even it was meant for the person next door to you, 
take it? Hallelujah. Because it's for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want us to do a declaration that will set the tone for all our services to the end of the year. Amen. Remember what I said, your faith plus hope gives you solution. Are we ready? You can say this after me. Thank you, Lord, that you came to seek and to save what was lost, which included my family and I. Let your graciousness be extended to all families of the world. I call on my God who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be empowered to overcome all mountains in my life. I have the mind and the might of Christ. Therefore, I will prosper in my pursuits. O oh Lord, I thank you that you are God and there is nothing hard for you to do. You have said in your word that with you all things are possible. And everything that is possible, you also make it possible for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just turning my page. My confidence is in you today. My trust is in you. My life is in you. My faith is in you. Therefore, I declare that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a problem solver. I'm a mountain mover. And in Christ, I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. The Spirit of God is upon me. And His power resides within me. The Lord has consecrated me through new birth in Christ Jesus. The life that I live now in the flesh, I live in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I boldly declare that my heart is yielded and my thoughts are guided. And above all, I am kept by the power of God. And I'm here to stay. Whether the devil likes it or not, I have life in abundance through Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom I confess today at Solution Center. In his mighty, powerful, saving name and grace, I declare no demon from hell, no principalities, no powers, no spiritual wickedness in higher places, in lower places, even in the country or my village can touch my life from this day forth in Jesus mighty name give him a shout of praise this morning oh I mean a shout of praise a shout of praise hallelujah hallelujah you may take your seats now amen can I have Psalm 91 Psalm 91, New Living Translation. Today is the first day, so I'm releasing some kind of blessing for us to receive. That will open the way and cleanse us from the short break we have, all the contamination to be buried in Jesus' name. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Simply put, stay there with me, please. I'll tell you when to move. Simply put, the shelter that means whether your house is rented, whether it's a mud house, whether you are in your car, you sleep in somebody's kiosk, no matter where your shelter is, watch this. The Lord 
will give you rest. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. So there is rest all around today in the first day of Solution Center. If you came in tired, you'll be relieved by the word of God. Hallelujah. And he says, his shadow of the Almighty will cover you. Remember even Peter in the book of Acts, when he was walking, his shadow was healing people. This is the Lord Almighty. Today, the shadow of God will give us rest. Give him a shout of praise. Two. Let's go to two. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. We should always trust the Lord. I may promise you to see me after solution for some fuel. I may fail. But if you trust God that he will release for me to release, then your faith is secure. Hallelujah. So we trust in him. Three. For he will rescue you from every trap, protect you from the traps. As you are here, as you planned yesterday, you iron your clothing, polish your shoe to be here. Somebody in the village is setting a trap for you. But guess what? They will fall in their traps. No trap that has been set for you or your family will work. As they are setting the trap, they will fall in it. And the trap will consume them in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout this morning. It says you'll be protected from deadly disease. Now they call it what? Monkey pox. Very soon we'll get guinea pox. Very soon we'll get Australian pox. All the poxes they throw. Look, God said what? He will protect you. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Four. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. From today, you don't need police protection. You don't need armor bearers. If God himself is becoming your armor bearer, then you fear no fall. You are protected day in and day out. You are protected when you live here. You are protected in your village. Those of you who are refusing to go and visit your mothers and grandmothers, go in the name of Jesus. Because the armor bearer who is God will be going with you in Jesus' name. Five, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. None whatsoever. Principalities and powers will not come near you. You may hear some wrangling in your neighborhood. I'm robbers, but it's not for your house. They've missed your address, and they will always miss your address. Because God is your armor bearer. Give him a shout of praise. Six, do not dread a disease that stalks in darkness, nor a disaster that strikes at midday. No matter what they come up with. We love the scientists. Some of them are from our families. But they've made up their minds, some of them, that every day you turn on the news, there's a new disease. Guess what? Minus you. Minus your family. Minus the church of God. Minus the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, give him a shout of praise. Seven. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. They will not touch you. You only see it with your eyes. In fact, this weekend, most of the funerals at your villages are for your enemies. Not you. Anyone that has pestered your life ever since your family was created up to now, may the fire of God consume them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Enough is enough. We are sick and tired of their schemes. The Lord says those evils will not touch you. Eight. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Just open your eyes. Just open your nothing. Don't do anything. When you see them, just open your eyes. As they're walking by your side, cursing and insulting you, you look, you see them no more because they have gone into the trap hole they were trying to set for you. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Nine. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, huh? If it rains, you're colliding. No matter what happens, minus you because God is your shelter. Have you ever heard that in the Bible or anywhere, that any pastor or prophet or something saying, and it rained in heavenlies? It rains only downstairs. That's a shower of blessing. So if God is your refuge and your most high shelter, all those who have leaking reefs when it rains, <laughs> Let me keep quiet. <laughs> Ten. 
No evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, which is very true. Check your life from 2019 when COVID was declared up to today. It may have been in your neighborhood, but your very home. Did it conquer you? Did it conquer you? Give the Lord a shout this morning. 11. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. You may be given an appointment in the not tongue, whatever you call it. You don't know anybody there. And you go there the first night, you want some food. So you ask if there's any kinky. They say, no, it's the north. We don't say gang kinky. So take left, take right. You're going to find yourself food. The angels of God, that's what this means. They will be holding your hand, guiding you, and guarding you. So wherever you go, if the Lord is your shelter, fear not. Because the angels are with us, even here now. Those coming, those watching, those listening, angels all over the building, give him a shout of praise. Go on. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hit your foot on a stone. Go on. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Fear no foe. Go on. I want to get to the last one. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? He says, I will protect those who trust in my name. Go on. When they call on me, I will. Hey. Oh, Solution Center, first day. You call on God and he will not answer. He says what? When they call on me, I will. So you're going to be answered today in the name of Jesus. No matter what you came for, whatever you need, what application, what marriage, whatever, barrenness, no matter what in the name of Jesus, the Lord will answer you today. He says, I'll be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor you. Hallelujah. Go on. Let's finish it up. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. Just this one in Message Bible. Let me finish it up in the Message Bible. Just this 16. Message Bible. Watch this. Okay, let me do 15 and 16. 15. So call me. I will answer. Be at your... <laughs> Jesus, you're not getting me. Be at your side in bad times. That means even in this economy, God is on your side. I will rescue you then. <laughs> Give the Lord a shout this morning. God is about to throw you a party. Some of us since 2019, even chicken wing, you've not had it. When you see KFC shop here, you pass the other side. Because the economy is draining us. But God said what? I will rescue you and throw you a party. There is a party after this service. In the name of Jesus. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Give the Lord a shout this morning. 16. I will give you a long life. Give you a long drink of salvation. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Isn't the Lord awesome? Isn't the Lord wonderful? Isn't the Lord merciful? Isn't the Lord gracious? Isn't his presence welcoming? I know this preparation this morning has altered something in your life. There's a shifting even right now as I'm talking. There's a shifting going on. You were low, now you are coming up higher. You used to borrow from this service, you'll be a lender. For the past 15, 20 years, you've been looking for the fruit of the loom. Today, the Lord says, take it in the name of Jesus. You have dreams every night. Demons chasing you. But the new dream you're having is you see a big hole and demons are falling in. In the name of Jesus, may the Spirit of God release something upon us before even we receive the heavy one from the prophet. I want you to give a shout that will shake your village this weekend. A shout that you feel. A shout that they will know that you are here to stay. A shout that this is the first day of solution. A shout for the devil to know that he tried but he failed. Give the Lord a shout. And I know seeing Sister Susie in that red dress 
is going to be more powerful in this service today. Give the Lord a shout. Amen. Oh, no, powerful. Lift your hands. Adonam, yeah. Yeah. Why? Yes, we are no powerful. Adonam, yeah.
gracious Father, we've come before you today. It is you who matters. Your son Jesus being revealed this afternoon to the people that are here. Holy Spirit, move in our heart, move upon your word, speak to your people, bring healing to the nations. I pray today, O oh God, that your name will be exalted even in this room and those who are watching and listening. There are many people here who need to be saved. Jesus, reveal yourself to them as your savior. There are some that need to be anointed. Holy Spirit, give them the key of that anointing to break the yoke that is there in their life. There are some that need miracles. Lord, show them the God of miracles. Turn their condition around. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated. God bless you in the presence of God. It's good to be in God's presence. You're welcome back after how many days? Almost 50 days. Oh, over 50 days. Uh, you're welcome. And I believe that God was not on holiday. He's still working. And any time you come to God's presence, you should expect God to speak to you. How does God speak? Through the songs, there is a word that ministers to you. Through the preaching, there is something that kicked you. I said, God is speaking to you. Sometimes it's not even the whole preaching. A certain portion just hit you like God have selected you and is speaking to you. Mark those things down. Sometimes the preacher man will say a word and it opens it might not be what he explained the scripture to be, but it hit you and opened your eyes to understand certain things. I call it a vision in a certain way. It opens your vision to be able to move forward. So when you come to the presence of God, don't just come and sit down. Pick whatsoever God wants to speak to you. For your information, what you do today what we do now could be a key for you in future it could also be a part love for you <laughs> but may it be a key if we read through the scriptures some people did certain things they didn't expect something to happen. But it became a key to them. Let me tell you the example of the woman you may call a prostitute. Some spies came there and she helped the spy. That is Jericho. When God wanted to destroy Jericho. That kind of act of faith created what? A key. The key was that she and her entire family 
escape death because of what she did at a particular time. And today, we still preach her and mention her name. Jonathan, after David came, he said, do you have somebody from the house of Jonathan? Jonathan became a key to Mephibosheth. This name is very difficult to mention. The one that was running away, the one that thought he would die, when David got to a place, Jonathan's name opened the door for me. Today, what you are doing could also open a door. It could be a key either for yourself or for your children in future. There are some people You walk to a place and you are negotiating. The moment you mention, sometimes you even mention your church name and the church name becomes the key. Or me and my family, there's no key. There are some families, they have got a key. You tell them, oh, I am the grandson of Kwame Nkrumah, it opens the door. Or the person then relaxes. Wow, this is an important uh, person. So, you, what we do today, Nkrumah did not just get that name, but he worked for it. He did something that identified him with it. Sometimes when you are doing it, you don't see the result. But one day, you're going to get it. I spoke something at our place about a woman. Very rich woman. Who, in the time of Elisha, and any time Elisha passed through their village or their town, he said, let this man, let us give him something to eat. He fed Elijah. Elijah didn't ask for anything. But she recognized that this man is a man of God. I call it recognizing the presence and anointing of God. Anytime you come to the presence of God and you, are, you recognize God is there, you benefit from it. Your worship changes. The way you relate to God changes. But if we don't recognize a thing as part of our meeting, a meeting I have to attend, you treat the meeting anyhow. And God will just walk by you and go. And say, I have come to church. I didn't feel anything. The problem is not God. The problem is you. I'm preparing you so that you can be able to get the maximum benefit from any meeting you attend. She recognized it. The first that she recognized this is a holy man of God. Now it's very difficult to find holy men of God. You can find men of God, but it's difficult to find holy men of God. It is not any man of God but the holy man of God. She went to the next level to prepare a place of rest for him. He said, it's not enough for me to give this man food, but let him prepare a room for him. And he did not put the room Sometimes you go to and visit people, they'll put you at the basement. But this woman, B, 
built. We'll call it pent. Is that how they call it? Penthouse. And that's the most expensive part of every building when you want to rent, isn't it? Put a table there, put whatsoever they might need to be able to operate. He told the husband, I believe the woman was more sensitive than the husband. But the husband, you know, we men sometimes, the men want to analyze things. Women have a spirit to understand the heart. Sometimes when a man had even speaking to him, he want to explain it with his brain. As if God can be interpreted in, vision, in brains, in your brain. He's bigger than your brain. So this woman told the husband and the husband saw that the woman perceived more than him. So when your wife understands spiritual things more than you, let him help you to do the right thing. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Bury your pride and listen to your wife. I say, prophet, what are you saying? Some people may debate it. Let them debate it. But this man listen and this man of God passed there all the time. Then one day she said to the man, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let's make what? A small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there, a table and a chair and a lampstand, so it will be. Whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. He shouldn't only eat and doze on a, in a chair. Let's give him a resting place. Let's give God a resting place. Not God only passing by. Make a room that God, I want you to stay in my house. He realized that the man of God carries the presence of God. That when the man of God stays there, God himself will come and stay there too. So the man asked, the prophet at a point, ah, this man be giving me, and I can't do anything for him. Let me ask her whether she wants me because I have great influence with the president. Because the prophet and the kings. Except if the king is a bad king. I want the prophet to prophesy what they want to hear. This is the kings always want prophets to prophesy along the line who they want. So the prophets no longer become the prophet of God, they become the prophet of kings. He said, what can I do for you? I have all that I can just walk without appointment to the president's bedroom and ask him whatever I want. So I want to talk on your behalf. How many of you, like you will bring some contract? The first thing you say, Chale, Mensaka. My son, let him put him here. You want some? And she said, look at the woman. The woman says something. I love it. Some of us, whatever we do, we do it with an intention. There's an ulterior motive. When he wants you to do something good for you, he wants something from you. 
he wants to enslave you. Look at what the woman said. The, the man. And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Me, I have my own experience. I have my own influence. Look, if I want the king, you're not the one who will tell me. Look, me dim. When I move, everybody knows I'm coming. The messengers, they see me, they open the gate. So I have my own influence. I have my own place. So I don't need, that's not the reason why I am helping you. I'm helping you because I've recognized that you are the holy man of God. It's good to give an offering to be blessed. But don't give offering because of, don't let only the blessing push you. Give because you recognize that this is the house of God. Then he asks, look at what, oh. He said, I'm among my own people. And he said, what then? And he said to him, Say now to her, look, you have been concerned. Okay, he said, oh, look at what the last said. He said, I do have my mama. This is what I want to read. He said, what then is to be done for her? Since she doesn't need any connection. What at all? Sometimes you want to help somebody, but you don't know what to do. Have you ever, have somebody ever done you something good, great good, and you, you are poor? And you want to retaliate from Idi Amin. This Idi Amin English. You want to retaliate. You want to also do something just to show your appreciation. But you don't know what to do. Even his birthday, the card people bring, very expensive. The card you want to send, your money can buy. It looks like an insult to the man. So you don't know what to do. You want to give somebody something. But you know this money will this person even respect it. Say then what can I do? Tell me. She said nothing. Then thank God for his armor bearer. Armor bearers they know everything. The moment they enter the house they know where the fridge is. They know where the they, they, Their eyes are going crook, crook, crook. They, they know every corner. And they will find what the need of the person. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son. And her husband is old. <laughs> he said, what? So, when you say your husband is old, it means that even she has no sons, but the man. <laughs> There's a problem with the man. <laughs> the one that will bring the seed, he's old. The system is old. The thing that will bring life is not there. So, she needs a miracle. Then, so he said, call her. When he had called her, I don't know who told that armor bearer that the woman doesn't have a son. They know every situation in Ghana. When he had called her, she, she stood in the doorway. I thank God. Then he said, 
about this time. Tell somebody about this time. Tell another person about this time. About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. Prophetic ways sometimes are contrary to what you see. So when a nation is in crisis, what they need first is a prophetic word. IMF is ICU. Intensive care unit just to keep give you oxygen. It doesn't solve problems. It is the word of the Lord that solves the problem. It helps. It has some help, but it doesn't solve. If I'm lying, look at Ghana history. Look at Africa history. We go in, come out. Go in, come out. As if it's a rhythm. What is God saying? What we need is thus says the Lord. In every crisis, ministers of God, men of God, the solution is in your mouth. Ways we speak carry spirit. It energizes people to do what they have to do to bring what God wants to do to come to pass. Tomorrow by this time, you see, the situation is serious. Because the man said, he explained that the husband, I'm speaking Ghan. Huh? How do you say it? Nwe. The airway. Huh? Esra. The man. Nipano. How do you say it, Hausa? Michi. That man. There's something. But in spite of the man being old, in spite of the woman being barren, in spite of the negative that they saw and that is happening to their life, the word of God comes. And say a year by this time. In spite of our economic situation and problem. We need that says the Lord. It is the word of God that will end the famine. We say, as of Mundi Div, Muchirkoma, Nemonisium, two, 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 when you fast, you see things two two. One human being see about five, then you talk there are five. Wait and see. That says the Lord. The woman exactly at that time. Tell somebody that time will come. See, he was speaking today, but the answer was next year. You say, I suffer. Next year, there was somebody. <laughs> she said, Prophet, pray for me. I want to come out of this situation. So when I was praying, God said, In six years' time, say, I jam <laughs> Six years 
time, this situation will go. He said, prophet, how can I survive? I said, how long have you survived it? He has stayed with it for over 10 years. Now I'm giving you six years. We are crying. <laughs> and when the six, by the sixth year, God has taken off that disgrace. It was like a dream. It will come. It will surely come. A year by this time, your conditions will change. Then, let's look at it. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Sometimes what we say doesn't go with your life. She has, she knows her husband's performance. She knows her own womb. When they were young and the man was even strong, they couldn't walk miles. Now you are telling me you are going to run a marathon. See, sometimes you have believed and have believed and have believed that nothing is happening. So the moment they tell you it's going to happen, say, hey, they are going to bring sometimes you've been able to block that thing from your mind you know this thing I've tried and I've tried it's not happening so let me forget about it that it won't happen and you've been able to psych your mind that this thing won't happen deceive yourself that it won't happen so somebody comes and want to tell you And bring all memory, all hope which you've hoped and it didn't work. Trying to agitate your mind, stir up your faith again. Say, no, no, I've been able to deal with this situation. I've overcome that situation. I have come to the conclusion that not everybody who gives birth. I have come to the conclusion that as for me, I will never give birth. So I've, 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 I've psyched my mind. And now the prophet have come to unpsych it. <laughs> to to un, 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 undo what you've done in your mind. Put new hope in you. So, so she believed. Exactly as the prophet said, what happened? Huh? But the woman conceived. Said, but the woman conceived. In spite of what you felt. But the woman conceived. In spite of her husband's condition. But the woman conceived. In spite of the conditions against your life. But the thing will happen. In spite of what is around you. You didn't have any connection. But it's going to happen to you. All visions that are left because you are discouraged, pick it up again. Wow. Let me tell you. Is it Job? Job said, the tree that is cut will do what again? Will sprout again. Oh, give me that scripture then before I go back. It doesn't matter. The woman told that that tree had been cut off. For there is what? There is hope for what? A tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again and that a tender shoot will not cease. After cutting it down, you think that that is the end. But there is hope for that situation. The woman thought she's cut down the tree in her mind. 
It's not going to happen again, but it sprout again. It got root again. It saw a child again. But remember, the prophet asked her, can I speak to the king? And said, I don't need the king. You will find out that in future, she will need the king. Sometimes you think you have everything. You think you are in power. So you don't need anybody's help. But one day, things will change. Things may change. And you will need the help of God. Some people think that they don't need God in their life. Because they can do it. They have what it takes to live this life. But let me tell you, conditions can easily change. And there was a time, Elijah then told her, fast forward. The child he gave, grew, went to the farm with the father, he said, my head, they took, uh, when it got serious, mothers are doctors, and they are nurses, and they are, uh, they are, they are, they are teachers, they are everything. He said, we men, we don't, the men, we don't know how to do many things. So he tried, I uh, said, your, 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 your son is sick. So, and, and the child grew, and now it happened. One day that went out to his, uh, to his father, to the reapers. Then she got, he got sick, and my head, my head, my head, they took the father, the mother, and the mother uh, uh, tried, and the child died. Is that not what she said? Say, I don't want you to come and trick me. Come and tell my emotions. The hope your one child, which you've got, she lost that child. She didn't tell the husband because the husband's faith is not the same as a faith. There are certain things. I won't tell anybody. I will tell God. If you tell men, they will kill your faith. But they won't understand the advice they will give you by the time you finish. The little faith you have is gone. So she didn't even tell the husband. She didn't tell anybody. She said, get the decent ready, my, my, the, the, uh, my car. They got the car and they sat on it and he rode, he drove that car, he said, because a rich woman, and, and they got to them, they, they went the king, and said the servant, drive and go forward. Do not do what? Slacken. He said, go speed. Go. Speed on me, and you are a so. Don't joke. This is speed. This is emergency. It's like uh, those that carry uh, dizzy, uh, sick people. Ambulance. Ambulance. Don't go those that go and slow, they're carrying dead body. The one that <laughs> is carrying somebody. <laughs> if it's for life, uh, it doesn't go slow. <laughs> Anytime I see it and it's going cool, I'm the siren, and I say, there are cars pulling, and it means that the person is dead. They're going to bury him. But if it's a life, it moves and meander and move and go fast in its space. This is not motor hairs. Uh, how do you call it? Hairs. This is ambulance to save life. And the prophet, look at what happened. The prophet saw her. And as she departed and went, the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off. If you do good to a man of God, he sees you. The one that feeds you, you can't forget. So her afar, I say, ah, that's the lady. There are some people, they are passing, you won't recognize them. I lie. 
There are some people when you see them afar, you know they are coming. <laughs> My brave winner is <laughs> coming. Some people get your attention. Whatever you do gets an attention of somebody. Some of you have bad attentions. You have hurt people that wherever you are, you know that this is the guy who hurt me. You close the door. That this is the man. So the woman, it opened the door. So look at what he said. Oh. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Gehazi, look the Shunammite word, woman. Please run now to meet her. He said, Do what? Some of you makes the Holy Ghost run to meet you. He makes angels run to meet you. Run now to meet you. So, please run now and say to her, is it well with you? The speed the woman was coming, it looked like something wrong. He said, is it well with your husband? Because you have seen you. Either your husband was, is dead. Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. Because after her, they've seen her. So they can't ask, is it well with you? <laughs> so what came in his mind? What can make this woman run like that? Either the husband is dead or something wrong with the husband or with the child. I said, nothing. And you know the woman's answer? She had a very positive answer. Her positive answer says what? It is well with the child. Is it, is it, it is well. Is it well with you? It is well with your husband. Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, three of us, it is well. The fact that we are going through economic crisis doesn't mean that we should throw in the towel. For the believer, it is well. What we have, have control over economics. He is the one that takes bread, five loaves of bread, in crisis and breaks them and feed over 5,000 people. He is the one that takes oh, water and turn it into what? Into wine. He takes your disgrace away. Where there is no way, he makes way for you. It is well. The fact that you are in trouble doesn't mean that God is not with you. It is well with you. I love that woman's word. It is well. So what happened? Now, when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. Amo bearers, that's how they do. They want to protect the man of God. By protecting the man of God, they hurt you. And some get offended that the way they have treated me, I won't go to church again. As if they came to worship the armor bearer. Okay. Finally, let him jump. Now, so she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say do not deceive me. As a woman thinker, so it is. So she was afraid of that. And whatsoever you are afraid of comes to you. But don't worry. If you are afraid and that come to you, God has a way of helping you. Finally, oh, let, 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 let's, oh. Then he said to Gehazi, 
get yourself ready and take your staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer. Answer him because I know you like money. If so. Some people like money that if you show him money and the IMF play, 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 he won't go again. <laughs> okay. Do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. Then, and another, and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. The woman said, Hey, I am going with you. If the staff fail to work, you must work. Then, oh, go to 31. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet him and told him, saying, the child has not awakened. Oh, let, I'm reading. When Elijah came in the house, there was the child lying, what? Dead on who? On his bed. On the prophet bed. Don't come and put the dead body on my bed. <laughs> and look at what? Heaven. He went there shut the door behind the two of them and pray to the Lord. He did what? He prayed to the Lord. Today I wanted to pray to the Lord too. No matter your condition, if it is a dead situation like this child, pray to the Lord. It will come back to life. Then, and he went up, lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and this, his hand on his hand, and he stretched himself out on the child. And the flesh of the child became what? Warm. Continue. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went and stretched. There are miracles that happen in faces. Sometimes, you know, even when he asked Ezekiel to prophesy upon the bones, they start in faces. This one, there's warmth in it, but still sick. It turned from death to coma. <laughs> so, a coma person and a dead person, the difference is that one can breathe. One has some life in him. So, sometimes our situation gets to the first point. We see a sign, but we don't see the thing working. We see that something is changing, but the thing is warm and cannot help you. Don't stop praying. Go again. Praying two, three, four, five, ten times is not a sin. Jesus himself prayed like that. He prayed for a blind man. The first I said, why do you see men like tree? He said, this is very dangerous. A vision that is not clear. It's better than you don't have a vision. He saw men like what? So he would treat men like what? The way you see people, that is the way you treat them. Say, I don't want to heal somebody who will be seeing men like what? Trees. If he want a chewing stick, your finger will be the chewing stick because he will see it as a branch of a tree. So some people, they hate you not because they want to hate you because their perspective of you is different. The reason why they don't even respect you is because of the way they see you. I want people to see clear. The problem is not with men. Men are not three. The problem is not the people. It's, you, it's not you. 
It's the way the people see you. I hope you are getting me. I see men like trees. Finally, oh, let me see quickly. And he returned and walked back and forth. And again, went and stretched himself out to the child. And, and the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. Once again, I talk about this over and over again. So I remember the day I went from a watch all night in Nima, just by the, uh, the post office. There's a clinic behind. And while we're walking, myself and Pastor Donko, around 5.30 a.m., we saw a woman carrying a child. And the child looked like was he moving? She rushed, cried, and I, we turned, said, either this child is dead or something's wrong. I said, Pastor Donko, let's follow this child and go and raise the child. And it's an Islamic place, if you're unable to raise. We went there. The doctors were rushing, trying to put and, and put and, and they put that they want to give water and they, they, were, they were not getting the, uh, the vein. When I said, we told the guy, hey, we want to raise the child. <laughs> this, child this, this kind of faith. I don't know, it's, it's some kind of faith. We want to raise the child. And the guy looked at us and laughed. He's gone. He said, come and do it. If you can do it. We went there, said, leave the office. We sacked the doctor and listen. We don't want to around. We held, I held his hands. And we started praying in tongues. By faith, there was faith in our heart. And the child screamed. We took the child. She sat down, looked at us. We picked the child on our chest. Walked to the doctor. Said, where is the mother? Madam, get your son. Go home. This faith is works. This God we serve is a living God. You can ask Pastor Donko. These things also energize our faith. I believe the Holy Spirit stir up our spirit. Because the, where I, we got the faith, I don't understand. We didn't think about we being beaten. What we thought was that the child was going to rise up. The child, we didn't even look at, we just moved out. They were all looking at us. I said we were angels that have entered there. He sneezed and rose up. And he called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammai woman. So he called her and when she came in uh, to him, he said, pick up your son. This miracle, it happened for the purpose. The death of this boy happened for the purpose. It was to open a certain door for the woman in future. Sometimes what happens to you, it may look very terrible, but it's going to open a door for you. And I will show you where the door opened. There was a time. Famine was going to come. And Elisha. This Elisha. Told the woman. Don't stay in Ghana. Move to Burkina Faso. 
You want to see America? <laughs> so she moved and went there for seven. There's going to be farming for seven years. There's some farming. There's some problem that come to country. Look, economic planning cannot change it. It is sometimes to tell man that God rules in the affairs of men. Amen. Nothing can stop it. Seven years, the woman was going to lose everything. The rich woman, sometimes you are open addition. Somebody's princess but you get to somebody's country and you see is it me is you me that drivers they drive and i sit behind when i come somebody open the gate the door is it me you are the one you are now a taxi driver You are now looking for a place to put your head. God has not left you. He is still with you. The door was open. So, the woman traveled. And they came. I see chapter 12 or so. One of the, and they came. So, the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. Then after the seven years, it came to pass at the end of the seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Now she now needed the help of the king. He said, should I talk about you concerning to the king? He said, oh, no, no, I don't need you. But now, she now need the king to, to do something for him. But Elijah had already spoken to the king. Let's see how he spoke to the king. The work that he did, the son that was raised was a message to the king. <laughs> then the king Talk with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. I don't know why at that particular time the king wanted to know the miracles Elisha had done because of this woman. God wants to speak to the king concerning this woman. So Gehazi, look, look at what Gehazi said. I said, Everything you go through is connected. Now it happened as she was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life. That there was the woman whose son he had restored to life. Appealing to the king. What happened? And there was the woman. When he was telling the king, the woman then appeared. He was talking about the story of how the son was restored. The moment they started speaking, the woman also came. See, God knows how to orchestrate life. He want to he know when to cross, when to speak, and when to stare at people to do you good. Look at it. Oh, it's good. Appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My Lord, O king, this is what the woman and this is what her son whom elijah restored to life <laughs> it has now become a key the key he used to open look at what the king said look at her and when the king asked the woman she told him so the king appointed what a certain officer for her saying Restore all 
that was hers. Not only that, and all the proceeds of the field from the day that you left the land until now. God does not only restore, he also gives you it became an investment and somebody was working for him, for her. Look, people are working for you. God will cause people to work for you. What looked like your disadvantage will become an advantage to you. What looked like they have taken everything, it will all be restored. He didn't say, give her a part. He said, restore what? All. And what again, the, the investment, the money they made, they said, the proceed we were. Restore all that was hers and all, not some, all the proceeds of the field that the day that she left the land until now. What about the one who worked there? He said, no, this one, I just hired you, I just... You are, you are hiring. I will ask you to work for me. The Lord said, look, you work for that lady. People are working for you. He will cause people to work for you unknowingly. They will think that their possession will belong to you. They are taking what belongs to you, but they are working for you. I hope you got me. Next week, I will continue with this Elijah. I like him. He's like the type of Jesus. A type of grace. Next week. Today, some of you have lost certain things because of some economic things. There is going to be a restoration. Some of you are barren in whatever you do. When a land is barren, whatever you put inside dies. What you need to become fruitful increase is a good land and a good seed. If you have a bad land and a good seed, the seed will die. If you have a good land and a bad seed, Nothing will come from. So you need what? A good land and what? So we'll be praying very soon. Some of us have become discouraged in life. Today, God wants me to tell you. The tree that is cut down will sprout again. Yeah. It will get root again. They thought they have cut you down. They thought you are finished. Let me tell you, you will sprout again. Yeah. As if your business is facing strong challenge today, it will sprout again. As if your vision is dead today. Prophetically, I'm telling you, it will sprout again. Yeah. Sometimes visions are challenged. You ask yourself, did God speak? He spoke. Is it the Lord who said it the other day? Yes, he said it. Why am I facing this condition for the king to restore to you your land and your proceed in future? Whatever energy you put into anything will not go without being rewarded. You may face all the difficult times, but there is a day that God God will restore all your energy, your strength, your whatever you put into it. It may look like you have lost all. He said, restore. Restore means that the thing has been taken away. It means that bring it back to the person. 
You might have lost your job, your house, something, your husband. There is going to be a restoration. Your health, there will be restoration. Satan is a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that I might give you life and give you abundant life. I prophetically speak to you, O ye barren, that a year by this time, your land shall begin to produce. I prophetically speak this afternoon that what causes you up and down, there's going to be stability in your business, in your health, in your life and your family. This is the word of the Lord unto you. The Lord will raise his hands on your behalf and he will restore what the enemy have taken away from you. And I will hold you and keep you. And I will speak my word upon your life. A year by this time, I am going to give you a testimony in your life. Oh, ye barren, now sing a new song. For your time is now. Your time of visitation is now. For I will not turn my back towards you. For I will face and I will bring you to an expected end. Brethren, the season is now. I sense within my spirit that visions are being revived. As I was speaking, I said, somebody is very got very tired out of exhaustion. You've done something over and over again and the person couldn't move again. And I saw a hand that brought water. When the person drank, the living water. He rose up again. A new strength in him. Energized in him. And nothing could stop that person. And he asked, is that the person? I said, that says the Lord. My hand shall be upon you. And my spirit shall perform it. For yea, he that is dry, my spirit shall come upon thee. And as my spirit come, he will stir you up. And what your physical flesh could not do, my spirit will do it through you, says the living God. Your life is going to change. He said, prophet, at this time, at this season, yes, I must prophesy when things are difficult, not when things are easy. That's where my, my prophecy works when difficult times are there. When it is nice and everything is cooler, <clears throat> anybody can prophesy and say that. But it is only God whose word can change our situation. The time and the season. May the Lord, your seed, germinate and bear fruit. May the Lord remember you like how he remembered the woman. Yes, and brought the woman at the right time to fulfill his word in your life. The season and the timing is now. The Lord caused you to break to restore to you what the enemy have stolen. The Lord bring healing unto your waters. The Lord call things which be not as though they were in your life. May the Lord hear your word and may the Lord establish his word in you. Oh, thank you. To say. God has the power to save. It doesn't matter how deep you have been, how deep you are in the situation. It doesn't matter what is attacking you. Oh, there is only one day. Power to save. Ah, Jesus.
every knee will bow down to your situation. Hey, every tongue will confess. And every tongue will confess about your situation. Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. You, you are Lord. Ah. Ah. Sometimes you go say, go and mention my name. That you tell them that it is this person that have sent you. The moment you mention the person's name, the door open. But there is a name far above every name, and that name is Christ. He is the greatest key. I call it the master key. There's no door it cannot open. Some names you can close their padlock. If you carry that name, they see you. Even if they want to do something good to you. This is this person's cousin. Kai, the way his parents showed me. The door is locked. Bah. Jesus and that name. He did something. He went to the cross and died and he humbled himself and God exalted him and gave him a name high above every name. The name was not just a cheap name. He paid a price. Whatever you need, the name has paid. 
so once it's mentioned you have the power it has got power to save if you are sick today I believe that that name will bring divine healing how many of you are sick today here you are sick you are here just stand in the middle if you are sick someone just this side there's a pain there place your hand there today I decree divine and total healing over that area in the name of Jesus the name that is above every name I decree that this disease will live in Jesus name that's one is your blood there's a cancer patient and that cancer is an aggressive one. Very aggressive. And it seems to be giving up. There's a name that is more aggressive than the cancer. I command that name to touch this body to destroy this cancer in the name of Jesus he said prophet you are crazy I am not crazy I know what I'm talking about you the kidneys I decree the God that created kidney that had a spare part for your body I decree that miracles happen to your life in the name of Jesus one has a problem with the shoulder left shoulder last Sunday last Sunday Pastor James The woman that brought which feet you have to even help her into the car after prayers it was on Sunday I said by the next day she'll come and tell they should give me a feedback how is it she went to work Monday morning those who were standing at the veranda there saw that feet as if nothing had happened miracles happen I believe when we pray in the name of Jesus that name has power to save it has power to heal it has power to restore this same power I employ in your situation no matter how difficult it is be set loose today and be healed whether from satanic angle whether from a natural angle whether it's from the flesh or physical angle there's nothing that cannot bow to the name of Jesus 
I cause you sicknesses and diseases to bow, be healed, be healed, be healed. I see five of them being initiated by demonic forces. Look at them. Look at them going. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Ho! Oh, look at them. I trust these demons have power. Just the mention of Jesus, I saw them scattering. Father, thank you for the healing. Thank you for those who are standing here. The healing power has touched them. A week by today, may the Lord give you a good testimony. Amen. Sometimes, yeah, prophet, you need to put your hand on some things and just wash us. They are no the healing. If the name of Jesus can't heal you, then my gymnastics can't do anything. It is the name of Jesus that way. One here, while I was preaching, you were asking for a child. A year by this time. We'll be dedicated. A year by this time. You will feed your own child with your own breast milk. One of you said, my husband has a problem. The woman husband has a problem too. It's not only your husband. And the man is not cooperating for medical <laughs> treatment. Today, whether he cooperates or not, year by this time, it's a prophet. And uh, who could you go say now? A year by this time. It is time. Lady, what do you want? Huh? Do you have a husband? You want a child? I pray. Father, I don't know the condition of this woman. I don't know her background. I don't know her husband. I don't even remember who she is. But you know her. Today, I use you as a point of contact. The problem in that womb, Lord, the name that is above every name. May you restore to her health to produce after her kind. In the name of Jesus, I speak that your ex, Maru Isabayanda, Kimokuta Krasti Krutakinda, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Take it. Someone here, you've taken seed about three times, and none of them worked. The last one, this one, is coming. Within two years, the Lord shall compensate you. The prophet, what are you saying? I'm just talking. That's why I'm a prophet. I'm not a teacher. The teacher will take you to doctrine. May I will take you to what I see.
someone is losing a house is losing some property and it is at a point you need divine intervention raise your hands up wherever you are that person so shall it be restored unto you it doesn't matter what battle and what warfare the Lord shall grant you divine favor. Go and repossess what belongs to you. There, there is only one name. son as if a lost son as if a lost son you've been crying for that son he'll be found he'll be back he'll be restored for I have something to do with that boy. The enemy have grabbed that son and wanted to destroy him. He's put him under some kind of influence today. I speak as a prophet that let your son come back. I finish. Every knee will bow down. Oh, every tongue will come. Jesus Christ, you alone. You alone. Oh, Jesus, you alone. right hand and lead you into that warfare Amen. especially one that seemed to have been cursed and it looked like the curse is running through your family I said even though you are born again you are seeing a similar thing happening to you I see at your point you being used as a point of contact 
to reverse the case over the entire family. Thank you. Hold it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy has been destroyed. He has fallen like this. He will no longer rise up on behalf of that family. There's a prophetic fall. The one that stood against the entire family shall lie like this and shall no longer rise up again. From today, grace is coming. Favor is coming. The spirit of the Lord will work on behalf of many. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. God, walk through the people. You're a mighty God. Forces are falling. Powers are crumbling down. I say you are the mighty God. I say the great, the great I am. Ha, ha. About seven of them. As you sing this song, seven of them shall be on time to possess their possession. I say you are the mighty, the mighty God.
Say for what but but I see a victorious hand. Son, look at me. There's a battle from both sides of your family to strangle and to destroy. It's not human beings, but there are forces covenant be made especially from your father's side
sometime one of you was in the room and something will try to take the person out from the bed and throw the person down literally it's not in the dream which one was that your mom and your sister they want to kill your sister where's your sister She's gone to the hospital. You went to the hospital. Is that your mom? Those forces that literally comes to throw you off from the bed. I'm not saying you had a dream. You saw that force. You saw that force. Two people cannot see things if it's in the mind of one. Whoever you tell do not believe. They want to kill you. But you can say you will not die. From you, they want to come to your brothers. That's how we sing the song. We have the mighty God. The great God. Are you from the hospital? If the bad news, they give you bad news about cancer. The doctors are almost trying to they are confused. Can you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? He is the mighty God. The great And what the enemy tried to do is to bring some aggressive cancer in your body. But Jesus, even the dead, even the dead, is able to raise. If a tree is cut down, it will sprout again and shall have a root. What will keep you alive is your faith. If only you can believe all this shall be possible. I know at this particular time your faith is down. And we are believing with you where your faith is down may our faith compensate your faith father they have been very faithful to you this lady says lord i want to hold on to you alone so what is happening to me? I don't understand. The bad people don't have this. The good person rather look at what I'm having. Lord, this is the question from the heart of your daughter. And not only this, but there are so many who are asking similar questions. Lord, arise. Turn things around. Give her a testimony. May the Lord fulfill. 
As doc comes, God comes in. That's where the doctors can do the best. You can go whatever doctors ask you to do. But never put all your faith in them. Put your faith in God. Add the God factor. And it is a God factor that can help. Sir, there is stagnation in the entire family. Nobody, they have potential in them. But as if there's a cover that has pushed everybody down, that you can't go up. I remove this lid and I set you free. I'm only using you as an example for all of them. There are similar people in this place that have similar situation like yours. Similar impossible situation like yours. I prophesy unto them, may the Lord answer thee. May the Lord look upon you. May the Lord bring you favor. Go and it shall be yours. God bless you. standing there you say you want the anointing of this man what do you do go and find something to do first what do you want to do you want to be a good minister of the gospel first go and find a job and in the job the Lord will begin to prove himself and teach you his voice. Then you understand your calling clearly. The devil will frustrate you from getting that job. What are you been doing for? So, may the Lord open the door for you. Say, prophet, obisen your man friend, I was young couple you and yet. After we prophet, we can talk about hearts. Eh? God have called and said, go and find some job to do. That is what I feel you should do first. And that God is going to guide your feet into your ministry. It is a path that leads to your ministry. And you are asking me, what does secular work have to do with spiritual calling? <laughs> I don't have the answer. But so you is a teacher. When you close, go and see this man. Let him open the Bible and show you what. But if you follow this instruction, it will be well with you. So, Lady, what do you want? Great, let me place my hand upon you. Whatever your desire is, may the Lord fulfill it. Rise up.
have as if a relationship as if any relationship you enter in when it's becoming fruitful something happens and now as if doors are locked in a certain way are you married no no relationship of yours becomes stable look at me do you want to marry you really want to marry are you sure eh? why are they coming now why are they not serious sometimes the unserious people are the one that come to you <laughs> two Those that want to open financially to you, when they get close to you, it evaporates. What do you do? Yes. And now, face at this difficulties in your finance. Look at me. You want to make it you will make it you cry to god because if you don't come my business is will collapse people are looking to you say oh sika today i pray you are living on your past glory and I restore unto you the grace to go beyond the past. And anyone who is here in that same situation, may the Lord lift you. People think you have this, but you don't now have it. May the Lord lift you and place you high above where you have ever been before. The same way, oh God, I pray for you. Lady, Thank you, Jesus. It is done. You are the one. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. This one. Shook shall be broken. I sense. Woman. That thing is broken for you to fulfill your goal. I anoint you with fresh oil with new beginning as long as the Lord live it he will remember thee and it is so the same way woman I won't forget you I will remember you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus what you've requested receive it it shall be yours. Woman. I'll hear you. And I'll fulfill. You. It is done. And gentlemen. You shall be. A lion killer. You shall slay. What. Others are afraid of. But possess your life because God wants to use you in a certain area. It's not man, but God. He said, Prophet, you don't know me. Why? Yes, I don't know you, but I know the God you serve. Have I prayed for you? So it is. Woman, you say you just touched me, you didn't say anything. So you can say, oh, is that all? <laughs> you just need a touch. Because God has gone ahead of you. Amen. So go. It involves everything. It is done. 
Thank you, Jesus. This is the guy. Wait, let me see. What if I got your name? Godfrey. What's it? I don't know you anywhere. But the Lord has spoken that you will lay your hands on him. And you'll feel some heat. And when I put my hand as if there was some heat. That's why I, I knew you were the one. <laughs> Godfrey. This battle. The Lord will win it. I rebuke these enemies. I break this barricade and open this door. Godfrey, your time and season to break through by this faith. Your faith shall make a room for you. And the things that have eluded you, you will then begin to walk into it. Then you will know that God rules in the affairs of men. I don't know you. But the Spirit spoke to me. That I will use you as a tool. A man that does not look that he matters when you look at him physically. You are not the one as you look at and call to pray this prayer. <laughs> but in time like this, say, how can it be? How will it happen? That the spirit of the almighty God will come upon you. Will come upon many of you. And things shall turn. The impossible will become possible. The grace of God will come upon you. And you will do what other men are not able to do. Go Fred. Go at this time. Uh, your tears are wide. Stop crying. For the time is coming. Laughter will be your portion. Oh Lord, I pray for you. And so shall this one be your desire, what your desire is. Today, mark a certain beginning in your life. Go and it shall be well. So shall it be. It is for you. Amen. Before we close, we're going to close now. What is this? What is this? Who is this? I see like 13. I see like 13. I hear like soko or soko or soko or soko. Count. Should I count left or right? Right, okay. Count right. Ten and three. And they said, yes. Two S. It look like school or soccer or and Sandra.
But you're called happy. So go. Yeah, Sandra. Good. I know he is happy. Is everybody happy? What do you want? May the Lord grant you the desire of your heart. Another one sitting. On the 17th row on my left have a similar situation with this lady and similar request. It is done. Amen. Thank you. Be seated now. This is just a, a warm up. Next week I say what? Kapata kata 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 kata. Next week, I believe something is going to happen. One, whatever life that you have. Whatever thing that you have that the enemy has poisoned, it could be your business, it could be your health, it could be anything, we're going to restore. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. It could be your marriage, it could be anything. You've got it by it's creating pain. What's supposed to help you is killing you gradually. What's supposed to sustain you is killing you. We're going to reverse it. There is a reverser. Next week will be the reverser of those things. Then we'll do an anointing, an anointing service. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. My ear fired. Maybe I'm putting it for next week. Pray. Get yourself ready. See, God can move, but man can frustrate God. Tell somebody, don't frustrate him next week. <laughs> Amen. I remember we're praying. We're going to close. We're praying. Went and waited upon them. We're praying, praying, praying. And the Lord spoke. I said, God, are you going to answer us? He said, I've been waiting for you people here a long time. Even you people were late. I said, ah. We thought we were going to wait upon God. But God was waiting on us to respond to him by faith that he can bless us. Some of our delay is not God. He's waiting. There's a giver and there's what? A receiver. The giver can do well, can give. But if the receiver refuses to receive, he hasn't got a thing. There's a sender, there's a receiver. Like the other day I said, there are some people said, oh, my phone is not good. Uh, these people are not doing very well. He was holding the phone, and the phone is an old, a kick one. It wasn't getting the signal. He was blaming everybody, but others are speaking. Some, your credit is finished. 
when your credit gets finished, you want to get internet, it won't come. Others will be sitting at the same place with you and be having information, sending information. You will open yours and it will tell you what, what comes. No connection. It don't get. It don't get to any. It don't get to anywhere. So if you're not receiving blessings or anything, check your data. If God seems to be silent, check your data and check your phone. Get more data. Store more prayer. Store more word. Read more. Pray more. As you do that, you are putting data. I'm showing you an easy way to go speak. So that God speaks to every people. He comes. There are two ways. You can feel God. No data. <laughs> but the word, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. When he comes, he comes to search in your heart whether there are some words he can use to speak. You know, all over the language we speak, it is one word, words we learn, first syllable, at one syllable, two syllable word, three syllable, then you join them together. If those words are not there, you can't speak the language. Some of us, the same way, our words is few. So when the Holy Ghost comes, he wants to minister to you. He comes, he looks for the word he can use to minister to you. It's not there. Why your phone so? Now I won't call it paper. So where do you hide your word? Where? Put it at the right time. The Holy Ghost will stir it up and use it as faith. God bless you. I dear my chairman, Minji Musika, Pastor Usina is our chairman. Amen. Free. So we will close next week. Fire up. Me, myself, I'll fire up. Hallelujah. I say what? I say what? I say what? Gentlemen, stand. I'm going to close. Give me my chest. This from my neck. Thank you, Jesus. So shall you carry a heavy anointing upon your life. And it shall be. Ranging Master, oh, I want that same anointing. Get up. Come here. Take it from my shoulder. You. I have to close. We'll do it next week. Someone healing is coming as we close. Some pain have left you. Check that pain. Right now, if it's gone, stand up. I want to finish with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you.
you Holy Spirit. Pain. Right now, look at what has happened. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are closing, but healing is happening. Today, more than 25 people getting to 30 people here. Or how many of them? Count them. One, two, three, four. Uh, count them. Somebody should count them for me. How many? 27. What? 30. Still, some are still getting their healings. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You think it's a joke? It's not a joke. Somebody's husband, as I speak, the prostrate is shrinking. The man is not here, but the miracle is happening. I say, oh, Difo. I didn't force any one of them. I didn't touch. I didn't pray. Closing time, the spirit of the Lord is still at work. Ah, thank you. She give me the Adonai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this healing for their lives. I thank you for this miracle that have happened. Lord, not by might, not by might, not by a man's hand, but so that all the glory will come to your name. At the name of Jesus, knees are bowing and they have bowed. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you offering okay you are very good people when a pastor forget offering you remember the offering it means you mean business with god and you are very faithful people god bless you for this for remembering alone there's a blessing in it i was going to close my yam and brief you offering Amen. I forgot it open. Don't worry. That's my nature. I said what? If you don't want where the Holy Spirit is, you want to time him, don't come to my meetings. My meeting is open. When the Holy Spirit says, I'll finish, I shall come. Hallelujah. When my president having come and finished speaking, I don't stop. I don't leave. Even human life. So, while I'm talking, God is doing something. I intentionally talk in between. Do I know the Holy Spirit is working? There was somebody who was lying down. They were doing operation on, uh, on that person and removing some things. And I'm just uh, with, uh, spending everybody's time so that they will finish. Thank you. We are going to take the offering. When you come to the presence of God, don't let pastors pump you. You don't need to pump anybody. But it's very important to understand, like I said, you are not even giving because you want to get something. You should recognize that God is here.
That's the first thing. Secondly, recognize that there's a blessing in giving than what? Receiving. Thirdly, your own need. You are sowing a seed towards it. Heavenly Father, today let it be a mark in their life. Some of them, the giving they're giving that they've never given before, like that before. But you've touched them to give out of their heart. Lord, look down upon them and upon the heart of your people. Lord, bless them. Increase them. Lord, visit them in a greater way. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless you. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome today and on next week. Some of you didn't believe we were coming today, but we came. Uh, Reverend Dr. Ishan is here. Oh, and Reverend Dr. Owusu Chirikon. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, is here, uh, Reverend Professor uh, and uh, uh, and the wife, uh, Mrs. Stella, uh, Dr. Stella, Amen. 
Okay. So God bless you. You can we can leave now. <laughs>